Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In 15 minutes, you can decide what program or what series to watch next or not. Or you can practice your German comprehension skills with Karim and Robi. Let's go! Listen and answer the following questions. Was schenkt Anastasia Karim? Was möchte Karim probieren? Karim ist in seinem Zimmer und surft im Internet. Da klopft es plötzlich an der Wohnungstür. Wer kann das sein? Meine Mitbewohner haben doch Schlüssel. Karim steht auf und öffnet die Tür. Da steht seine Nachbarin Anastasia vor ihm. Hallo Karim, sagt sie. In ihren Händen hält sie einen kleinen Korb mit roten Eiern. Hallo Anastasia, wie geht es dir? Gut, danke. Wir haben Eier gefärbt. Möchtet ihr ein paar? Es sind zu viele. Wieso Eier, denkt Karim. Dann fällt es ihm ein. Das sind Ostereier. Aber Ostern ist doch vorbei. Aber es gibt zwei Ostern. Ich bin griechisch-orthodox. Bald ist Ostern und wir färben Eierrot. Außerdem backen wir Osterzöpfe und essen alle zusammen. Wann ist orthodoxes Ostern? fragt Karim und nimmt die Eier. Naja, das kommt drauf an. Das orthodoxe Ostern ist nächste Woche. Die Leute gehen auch um Mitternacht in die Kirche. Es ist ein wichtiges Fest für viele Menschen. Gehst du auch? Weiß ich noch nicht. Ein paar Freunde gehen. Willst du mitkommen? Karim winkt schnell ab. Nein, danke. Aber wenn du Osterkuchen backst, dann probiere ich ein Stück. Danke für die Eier. Gerne. Wir schauen die Lösungen an. Was schenkt Anastasia Karim? Anastasia schenkt Karim rote Ostereier. Was möchte Karim probieren? Karim möchte Osterzopf probieren. Do you enjoy Karim and Ruby's stories? You can support this channel and my work, of course, by subscribing, liking, hitting the bell notification and some other things that I talk about in the info box. Thank you so much and don't give up. Wir lesen zusammen. This is the part where I also speak English and we check everything out step by step. Karim ist in seinem Zimmer und surft im Internet. Quite an easy sentence, but two things I want to mention. In requires dativ, ist in seinem Zimmer. Here we can see the M, which makes it super obvious that we have a dativ construction. Und surfed im Internet and surfs in the web. We could theoretically say er, but we don't need it because in both parts of the sentence we have the same subject. Next one. Da klopft es plötzlich an der Wohnungstür. Plötzlich means suddenly. And we have a construction which is not quite a level with it. Es klopft. It knocks on the door. Klopfen means to knock. And this is our verb. And this is our subject. Es klopft an der Wohnungstür. It knocks on the door. An der is also a dative construction. But because it's female, die Tür... We don't see it so obvious here, but it is. Wer kann das sein? Who can it be? Theoretically, we could also say, wer kann es sein? Same meaning. Meine Mitbewohner haben doch Schlüssel. My roommates have keys. Doch is an emphasis when we are questioning something or want to emphasize a fact. This is also practical for rhetorical questions and for many other things. Karim steht auf und öffnet die Tür. Karim stands up, it's an opening verb, und öffnet die Tür and opens the door. Again, same subject, we don't need it. Da steht seine Nachbarin Anastasia vor ihm. There stands his neighbor Anastasia 
in front of him for ihm. Again, what is it? I think you know by now, Dativ. For jemandem stehen. This combination requires a Dativ. There stands his neighbor Anastasia in front of him. Hallo Karim, sagt sie. Hallo Karim, she says. In ihrer Hand hält sie einen kleinen Korb mit roten Eiern. We can also say it in plural. This makes it even better. Let's correct it. In ihren Hen then same thing just because she holds it with two hands here just saying so in her hands or in her hand she holds a basket their corp the basket with eggs so basket i will write it here basket and now we have two things in front of our nouns this is something i haven't explained yet in my a2 grammar but i'm pretty sure it's coming soon Normally, when we have an adjective, for example, klein, this is how you learn it, klein. We also learned so far to make it smaller, kleiner. And you also learned the superlative, at least with me, kleinsten. But now you see here that nothing of this fits. The only reason is that we have it in front of the noun we are describing. And therefore, we also have to conjugate it. In this case, accusative. Einen kleinen Korb. And the next one, it has mit in front, so therefore it's dativ. Mit roten Eiern. It looks the same, but it's not. So in her hands, she holds a small basket with red eggs. Hallo Anastasia, wie geht es dir? Not so complicated. Hello Anastasia, how are you? Gut, danke. Wir haben Eier gefärbt. Haben gefärbt is perfect tense. This is a one. And the infinitive of gefärbt is färben, to color something. So we can say Eier färben, to color eggs. Haare färben, to color your hair. And so on. So she says, good, thank you. We colored eggs. Möchtet ihr ein paar? Do you want some? Ein paar means some. It can be three, four, five of something. But don't confuse it with das paar, which means the couple. And another meaning even when we say ein paar and we say something like shoes or socks or something like this, something that comes in two, this means a pair of something. So... Only if it's written with a not capital letter, with a small letter, it means some. So, do you want some? Es sind zu viele. They are too many. Zu, in front of an adjective, makes it two. Wieso Eier, denkt Karim. Why eggs, does Karim think. Dann fällt es ihm ein. The verb here is an opening verb. Einfallen. Einfallen means to get an idea or to remember something or something pops up in your head. The subject of the sentence is it and the object is a dative object. So if you say it in bad English or even not in bad English, but then it struck him. I think this makes sense, I hope. <laughs> yeah, so you can re um, remember it like this. Es fällt ihm ein. It struck him. He remembered. Das sind Ostereier. Those are Easter eggs. Aber Ostern ist doch vorbei. Vorbei is an adjective. It means over or finished. Doch again for emphasis because we are questioning something. It's like Eastern is over, isn't it? Something like this. Aber es gibt zwei Ostern. But there are, es gibt, zwei Ostern, two Eastern. Ich bin griechisch orthodox. Of course, um, if you want to learn it, you can, but you don't have to. It's more of a passive learning. Griechisch orthodox is a really common belief in many countries. I mean, depending where you're from, you're familiar with it. It's like Greek orthodox. It's, an, it's another church, also Christian, but yeah. She says... Ich bin griechisch orthodox. I'm Greek orthodox. Bald ist Ostern und wir färben Eierrot. Bald means soon. 
So the first statement is Eastern is soon. Eastern is the subject, but for emphasis reasons, we say the soon in the beginning. Soon is Eastern. And new part, wir färben Eier rot and we color eggs red. Außerdem backen wir Osterzöpfe und essen alle zusammen. Außerdem, besides that, or additionally, backen wir verb subject construction because we have außerdem in front. Besides that, we bake some kind of Easter bread and wir, we don't have to say it, but it would be here, essen alle zusammen and eat all together. Wann ist orthodoxes Ostern? fragt Karim und nimmt die Eier. When is orthodox Eastern? And again, we have an adjective in front of a noun, therefore we have this modification. So when is orthodox Eastern? asks Karim and takes the eggs. Naja, das kommt darauf an. This is a nice pattern you can learn. It means it depends. It depends. Das orthodoxe Ostern ist nächste Woche. And she answers, the orthodox Eastern is next week. Die Leute gehen auch um Mitternacht in die Kirche. The people also go at midnight in the church. Here we have in die. Do you remember before we had also in, if I'm not mistaken, but it was dativ. This time it is accusativ. Because of the verb. This is a little mean grammar issue. I cannot wait to explain to you in my grammar <laughs> series very soon. So people also go into church at midnight. Es ist ein wichtiges Fest für viele Menschen. It is an important celebration for many people. Gehst du auch? Are you also going? Weiß ich noch nicht. I don't know yet. Noch nicht, not yet. Ein paar Freunde gehen. And again, some friends. Not a pair of friends, but some friends. Some friends go. Willst du mitkommen? Do you want to join? Here we have a modal verb in the beginning and the verb at the end. Do you want to join? Karim winkt schnell ab. Abwinken is a little bit complicated. It's not a two. But to be honest, this was the, the most useful and practical way to say He rejects. Abwinken, if you are said by itself, winken means to wave with your hand, like, hi, how, how are you? Like this, right? So this is winken. But if you say abwinken as a full verb, it means to, to reject. Normally, you reject by waving also your hands to make like a little wall with your hands, right? Depends where you're from, of course. But this is what it means. Karim rejects quickly, schnell. So he doesn't even humor the idea. He makes like really quick, uh, super clear that he doesn't want to join, right? So he says, nein, danke, no, thank you. Aber wenn du Osterkuchen backst, dann probiere ich ein Stück. Here we have a nice construction. We talked about it a lot. It's this kind of wenn, dann, wenn, then. But when you bake Easter bread, then I taste a piece. Probieren to taste. And because of the done, we have a verb subject. Here we have a verb at the end because of the when. And the done is voluntary. We could also say, wenn du Osterkuchen backst, probiere ich ein Stück. If this confuses you, I was just talking about it in my other series. Check it out. Or leave a question in the comments. Danke für die Eier. Thank you for the eggs. Die Eier is accusative because of the für. Thanks for the eggs. Gerne. You're welcome. This is it for today. I hope it really helps you to get the language a little bit more into your daily or weekly routine. Frage. Feiert ihr Ostern? If you want to write something, I will correct it and answer. It's an additional practice if you want. Thank you so much for your support. You can follow me on Instagram, also on Facebook. I do also language meetings there. So it's worth checking it out. I really recommend you to don't give up. Take your time. 
watch my videos if you watch them from zero or from the parts you don't understand you will understand it for sure and i post every week twice just stick with it and you will see it will get better every week thanks for watching and i will see you very soon bye